D. Christopher here to welcome you to another episode of P3 TV. We've got a lot to get through this week, so let's have a quick look what's on today's show. First up, Josh is going to talk to us about Hologram by David Stone. We then have 52 cards in 52 seconds with Kevin. Louis Laval will be discussing some of his thoughts on mind reading. And finally, we've got a full performance of Forgotten Princess by Alexander Marsh. So let's not waste any more time. Let's go straight over to Josh Birch, who's going to talk to us about David Stone's Hologram, an effect that looks great on Instagram as well as in real life. Today I'd like to talk about Hologram by David Stone. This beautiful piece of magic offers two striking visual moments. First, you cause a sticker to phase into existence. Then with a snap, you instantly cause that sticker to change color. Oftentimes with magic of this caliber, there are one or two inconveniences. With Hologram by David Stone, all you get is a super practical, super visual magic effect. In performance, a card is selected and marked with the sticker. It is then vanished and appears in the magician's pocket, this time without the sticker. The magician then causes that sticker to reappear, but it's the wrong color. He changes the color of the sticker, and the card is handed out for examination. Yes, the card can be signed. And get this, the stickers can be reused. If they ever get dirty or tarnished, all you have to do is rinse them under some water and they'll be as good as new. That's like a trick in itself. If you are looking for a practical piece of magic that looks like a camera trick, then you need to check out Hologram by David Stone. Another winner from David Stone. It really looks like trick photography. Now let's go have a chat with Kevin. He's gonna tell us all we need to know about the Emperor playing cards, a fantastic deck with lots of custom artwork. Hello my friends and welcome to another episode of 52 Cards in 52 Seconds. Today we're talking about the Emperor deck. This deck was produced by us here at Penguin and designed by Mark Stutzman. We have a custom back design, Ace of Spades, Joker, Tuck Box, and Foil Seal. The faces are classic for familiarity and compatibility. This first edition version was printed by Expert Playing Card on Classic Stock at their Taiwan factory. The cards handle and fan amazingly. They're traditionally cut and are great for Pharaoh shuffles. In addition to the standard version, we also have a marked version, which you can distinguish by its gold foil seal. There's also a super limited collector set, which includes an individually numbered gilded deck in a pearlescent paper tuck box. We even created custom collector coins, pins, and art prints to go along with the decks, so be sure to check out all of those options. Thanks, and see you next time. The Emperor decks are very limited, so you'll want to nip over to Penguin Magic as soon as possible and pick up a couple of decks for your collection. Not too long ago, we shot a download called AOK2 up in the Oracle Bar in Liverpool. You will have seen a full performance in the last episode that I presented. Now Lewis is going to talk to us uh, a little bit about his thoughts on mind reading. This is a snippet from that expansive download, which really is a masterclass in modern mind reading. Let's nip over to the Oracle now and have a quick look at what Lewis has to say. If you think about a classic magician, uh, like the, uh, using the, the wave of the wand moment, the moment that the magician waves the wand over the hat, it means nothing to us, but, and it means nothing to a modern audience, but in, in the old days, the magician waving his wand, that was the moment that the magic is supposed to happen. So whatever his method is, has happened before or afterwards, but the audience needed to see the magic happening. And back then, it was the magic wand being waved over the hat. That was the moment the magic was meant to take place. Now, if you are reading minds, or if you are doing psychometry or palm reading, there needs to be a moment where the mind reading takes place. Now, I'm guilty of this as well. I've seen so many mentalists do this in the past. They give their spectator an awkward look. They raise one hand up as if that's gonna do anything, and they ask the spectator to just think about your drawing, think about the name, repeat this over and over. I hate that. Because this point of the interaction uh, doesn't rely, the, the method doesn't rely on that anyway. The method is always something else. And a lot of mentalists, including myself, because I'm guilty of this in the past, nothing to do with the method is taking place here. So why make it so boring? You're just acting at this point. So why act so boring? Why give them, because 
they're not going to remember anything to do with the method, but they are going to remember the moment that you were able to read their mind. So make it something worthwhile. Don't forget to make eye contact with your spectators. Eye contact is the most incredible thing. It's the most powerful thing in the world. It's more magical than anything, anything that we can do here. Make eye contact with them. Hold their hand for a moment. If you're holding on to their item, don't forget to act or behave as though you are genuinely receiving impressions from their item. If you're looking at their hand, don't just glance down, because everything you're going to say is in your head anyway. You don't need to look at their hand, but they don't know that. Be sure to look at their hand, uh, point out a few different lines, move some of their fingers. They need to see that you are taking this seriously, and it is only acting, so why not act like a genuine mind reader? Don't resort to having them repeat it in their mind as you look at them. Too many mentalists are doing that, and what will separate you from them is how you are able to gain information from another person's mind. If you want to, you could even have them, instead of palm reading, you can have them hold their hand up like this and you place your hand against theirs as you make eye contact with them. Anything that's gonna make them feel like this is the wave of the one moment. Okay, here's the moment where he's receiving impressions. Don't ruin it. Absolutely don't ruin it because no matter how technically skilled you are at performing, what matters most is how it's perceived by the audience. If you claim to be a mind reader, make it look like you're reading the minds. People know that in their normal everyday state of mind that mind reading doesn't spontaneously happen. They know that mind reading doesn't take place in normal conversation. So if you're mind reading whilst having a normal conversation with them, they know that mind reading can't take place in, in, in an interaction like this. Change it up a bit, do something different. For mind reading to happen, or for mind reading to suddenly become possible, something has to happen first that would allow mind reading to take place. Don't just let it be normal conversation and then reveal it. Whatever you do, please don't do that. Let it be something beautiful. Let it be something memorable. Let it be something worthy of a photograph. A very difficult things for mentalists and mind readers to do is to get uh, promo shots of them performing. Unlike a card magician where you can have cards everywhere and people reacting, it's hard to photograph mind reading. But it's not if you make an effort to appear as though the mind reading is genuinely taking place. That is it for today's episode. There's only one clip left to show and that's of a full performance of Forgotten Princess by Alexander Marsh. This is a fantastic twist on a classic effect that also works over Skype or Zoom or wherever you're performing your interactive magic shows. So you'll want to pick up your copy of Forgotten Princess after watching this performance and you'll be able to make a couple of little tweaks and perform it online. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time. So do you play poker at all? Two, no, three, four. no, neither do I, because no one ever wants to play with me. I can't work out why. But instead, uh, we're going to try something but with a poker hand, because I've got five cards here. And you don't need to know the rules of poker, because I'm going to show you these five cards and I just want you to memorize one. So you're just going to remember one of the five <laughs> cards here. Yeah, don't have to remember all of them just one of them, so I'll hold them up so you can see them all. Just think of any one of those cards. Have you got one in mind? Yes. Yes? Just lock it, just keep repeating your head so you know it's right there. So, there are one, two, three, four, five cards right here. And you're thinking of just one of them. So imagine I could reach into your head and just take that card out, like that. It would make sense that when you looked, there'd only be four cards, and your card had I really reached into your head and taken out would be missing now, which it is, yes? Is that right? But here's the really weird part. I haven't hypnotized you or anything like that, but if I put this card back, so you can see there are five cards, your card is still missing, isn't it? And that's because the card isn't missing from here, it's missing from your head, which is a really weird feeling. But if you look at my finger right here, and it comes back, you can say it out loud, what was it? The Jack of Spades. Jack of Spades is back, yes? What? Is that right? What? <laughs> That's so weird. That is weird, isn't it? And you're not hypnotized, we haven't, we haven't prearranged anything. No. <laughs> I like the way, like, I don't think I'm hypnotized. Yeah. No. no, trust me, you don't. Don't forget to follow Penguin Magic on all of the socials. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, anything else you can think of. Just search Penguin Magic and we will pop up.